Hello, Christina Buetti and Cosmos Zavazava. Can you explain to me why the International Telecommunications Union is, Union is here at the COP? The International Telecommunications Union is here, and uh, this is not the first time it has come here to participate in uh, COP matters because we basically believe that uh, information and communication technologies do permeate every facet of human life. Climate change is a big challenge to the world. New technologies are uh, a digital dividend to the world. So we think we can unlock some of the issues like mitigation and adaptation, uh, technological transfer and other related issues using our technologies and skills. Okay, so what about the, the, the emissions that you cause as an industry? The uh, damage that you cause as an industry, first of all? Basically, there are side effects to the use of information and communication technologies, but we go along the lines of cost-benefit analysis. The percentage uh, of emissions coming out of ICTs are very small. They are about 2.3, 2.4, depending on the measurement you are using. But if you look at other sectors, they are emitting huge amounts of uh, GHG. And because of that reason, we believe that uh, we can use uh, ICTs as a solution to mitigate the emissions that are coming out of industries and other uh, sectors. For example, I can give you an example. For example, if you look at uh, the emissions that you get out of travel, international travel by people, delegates and everybody else, we provide a smart solution by providing a platform for telepresence or uh, using teleconferencing and then you cut down on the number of people who travel. We know it makes a difference to have a face-to-face -face interaction, but uh, we can reduce the amount or the numbers of people traveling. You've just run over, sped past loads of issues, so I'm trying to catch up, but we'll, we'll start at the end. Um, do you think it's possible to have a COP17, COP18, like, like now, now but, but over telepresence? Uh, this is a treaty making uh, conference and it is important to have face-to-face -face conduct and to uh, discuss issues. Having said that, the preparatory process could be done by, uh, by telepresence and there are some people who are not necessarily negotiators who are doing advocacy work and even uh, showcasing certain technologies or certain practices and because for, of this reason you could have those people basically doing it through telepresence and it was already demonstrated here by some of our partners that telepresence does indeed work and you can reduce the number of delegations for example if you have a delegation of a hundred people you can have 50 people here and 50 people at home and uh, when they remain in their offices they can still uh, in a virtual manner be at the conference as it were. Okay, it, are there any international negotiations where you're actually beginning to have an influence in that area? I think our ICTs is a cross-cutting tool, so it is being used more and more right, in different conferences. Like, for example, one of the, even uh, within ITU, actually, now all our conferences are paperless. So what we have seen, for example, here, is that many of the documents, they are still being printed, which means that you still have to cut trees, reduce the number of trees by working completely electronically and using ICTs. This process and these examples has been shared also within the UN systems and other UN agencies have used it. So I think that certainly there are ways and means how different communication technologies can serve and that help people also to be more active because certainly uh, to allow the participation of many stakeholders and COP is a great example because it involves governments, UN, the industry, the NGOs. Uh, it gives you a clear example that you can use remote technologies and people they still feel part of the process. Yeah. Um, I think the jury's out on that, to be honest, because as you were saying earlier, sometimes you really do need a face-to-face -face and yes. nothing is ever going to get around that. But I, I take the point also that if you have a shared value system, then you shouldn't need that kind of contact. But if we go back again a little bit to the communications industry itself um, and, the mitigation and the emissions it causes, for example, in its data centers and you know, those kind of areas, what are you doing to become more efficient? 
Well, we should combine the dialogue on climate change with the dialogue on e-waste and trying to save the environment. And uh, one of the key issues that we have done in, in our standardization effort of uh, telecommunication networks, gadgets, and everything else uh, is that we have come up with a universal charger for mobile phones. So many people here travel with more than three, four chargers of a different kind. Why can't we unify and just come up with one charger that can be used so that it, the disposal element does not uh, go against the, the environment? So that's one thing. Second thing is that we are setting up across the globe, as I tell you, uh, centers that we call interoperability and conformance centers where the technology has got to be tested and it has to be appropriate. Here at COP16 there is discussion on setting up technology centers for climate change and we think there is a natural synergy in that. Uh, we can work together, we have the expertise, we have a membership, 192 member states and over 750 sector, private sector members. And we think we can pretty much harmonize practices, standard operating procedures in terms of uh, climate change management, and also, over and above, raise resources that are needed to create an information society, which is a green society. You think you can put standards on the countries across the globe in ICT? Actually, this is what we do. ITU is a primary and global body for ICT standards. We develop key standards. So, um, what, Ma what Cosmos mentioned is one of our recent standards that was approved with regards to the universal mobile charger, but we do also different standards for the ICT industry. And we are also developing um, global methodology to measure and assess the emissions of the ICT sector, as well as also how ICTs are used in other sectors to reduce their own emissions and being able to measure the reduction of emissions. So we're working together very, very closely with government and with the ICT sector in that respect. And this can be, um, uh, actually, uh, we think that it will be extremely beneficial to UNFCCC parties. <laughs> Most definitely. What, what is it you are, that you're hoping to see out of COP16 then? I think, uh, again, working in a constructive manner and I see that different parties are working all together, certainly our aim is to see an achievable balanced outcome. This is extremely important to balance the different interests between developed and developing countries and the funds also that are being allocated both for the adaptation as well as for the financing mechanism. Again, in that respect, certainly ICTs can help because it's, a, um, I would say, a completely cross-cutting technologies that can help different parties for different needs. So we're not certainly one of those that but we are here to help more than uh, having a hidden agenda. Yeah, and I would add that um, the issue of information and communication technologies should appeal to all of us. We all use mobile phones today and probably the majority of the people use fixed phones. Have we ever wondered why there is no interference between your phone or telephone conversation and John's telephone conversation? It's simply because you have a body like the International Telecommunication Union which is responsible for allocating spectrum frequencies and making sure that the, in a potentially chaotic situation there is a harmony. So we think out of this conference we are likely or we are building pillars to better things. The technology is now available, the regulatory framework is there, the legal framework is there. We just have to stand up and walk. Okay. I wish you good luck then. Thank you very Thank much. You very much. Thank you. Yeah.